Today we're gonna to look at a really interesting infinite sum which I've heard called Newton's sum, although I bet there are a bunch of sums called Newton's sum. So anyway, let's look at what we have. Our final goal will be to show that one plus one third minus one fifth minus one seventh plus one ninth plus one eleventh minus one over 13 minus one over 15 continuing on forever is equal to pi over two times the square root of two. But let's notice the general form of this, you know, big sum can be written as maybe alternating chunks of sums of reciprocals of odd numbers. We've got two that are added together here, two that are subtracted, two that are added, and so on and so forth. So in fact, we could write this left-hand side as follows. Notice we have the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of minus one to the n, and then here we have the sum of one over four n plus one plus one over four n plus three. So let's just check that to make sure it makes sense before we get on to, you know, deriving this identity. So notice the n equals zero term gives us exactly these first two terms. That's because we have negative one to the zero and then we clearly get those two. And then let's just make sure that it keeps making sense. So the n equals one term will give us these two terms. That's because we have one over four plus one and one over four plus three. Next, the n equals two term will pretty clearly give us these two. We have negative one squared, which is positive one, and then one over eight plus one and one over eight plus three. And then likewise, this seems to be the n equals three term. Okay, so, well, it looks like this is maybe the closed form of this series, or maybe the closed term form of this series. Do you love what my team and I do to produce free math content? Then you should join the Patreon. For just $5 per month, about the cost of a cup of coffee, you can get ad-free versions of every video, access to the live seminar series, and more. Plus, you'll be helping keep the second channel, Math Major, where I post full courses on topics ad-free. If you're feeling extra generous, $10 a month gets you everything at the $5 level, plus you also get your name in the end credits of every video. We appreciate any support, but we ask you only join if you're financially secure enough to do so comfortably. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you there. Okay, so now let's get to showing that this is in fact equal to pi over two root two. And let's do this by opening this bit up and just saying that this is equal to this summation notation form. So here we have this is n equals zero up to infinity of minus one to the n times, and I'm actually gonna change this a little bit. I'm gonna write this as x to the four n plus one over 4n plus 1, x to the 4n plus 3 over 4n plus 3, where I've evaluated this at x equals 0 and at x equals 1. So in other words, I'm viewing this as a maybe zeroth integral, just the evaluation of a function at endpoints. But now notice that this looks, like I said, like an evaluation of an integral. So I can apply the fundamental theorem of calculus and change this zeroth integral to a first integral by taking the derivative. So that's gonna leave me with the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity. I still have my minus one to the n. And then taking the derivative of these two terms gives me x to the four n plus x to the four n plus two. But then taking the derivative means I need to include an integral. Again, by the fundamental theorem of calculus. And now by the dominated convergence theorem, I can exchange the order of summation and integration, and that's exactly what I'll do. So I'll write this as the integral from zero to infinity of, and then actually while I'm at it, I want to factor an x to the 4n out of this, and that's going to leave me with a 1 plus x squared. Okay, so then I'll have the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of minus x to the four all to the n power dx, 
where, like I said, I've creatively rewritten some things. So I took this minus one to the n and I brought it in a little bit, and then I factored an x to the four n out. But now check it out. This is exactly a geometric series. So this is a geometric series, like I said, with a common ratio of negative x to the fourth. And the starting term is one as well. So that allows me to rewrite this using the standard formula for geometric series summation as one over one plus x squared over one plus x to the fourth dx. Because I have my starting term, which is really just this multiplier over one minus the common ratio. So I have something like this. And now I'm gonna use a little bit of a trick with the factorization of one plus x to the fourth to help me simplify this integral. And I'm just gonna present this as an observation, but you can multiply it out to make sure this works. So x to the fourth plus one, in other words, one plus x to the fourth, in fact, can be factored as x squared plus root two x plus one and then x squared minus root two x plus one. So like I said, multiplying that out, you will gain x to the fourth plus one. I won't do that, but that's fairly easy to show. And then I can do a partial fraction decomposition as well. So a partial fraction decomposition along with this factorization will end us with the following equality of integrals. So this will be equal to one half, the integral from zero to one of one over x squared plus root two x plus one dx plus a half, and then the integral from zero to one of one over x squared minus root two x plus one dx. Okay, and like I said, that's from like a partial fraction decomposition of this in view of this situation right here. I guess maybe we could also just note that one over this x squared plus root two x plus one plus one over x squared minus root two x plus one. Adding things together after finding common denominators and such will leave us with two x squared plus one over x to the fourth plus one. So maybe that's a little bit of a homework exercise. It's really just a computational exercise. Okay, great. And now what I'd like to do is complete the square of each of these denominators. So let's look at this first one. So we can complete the square as x plus one over root two squared plus one half. And then we can complete the square here very similarly as x minus one over root two squared plus one half. Okay, good. And then what I'll do is I'll take this two and I'll multiply it into this x plus one over root two squared and I'll also multiply it onto this one half. So this two is in the denominator and that half is in the denominator. So that's how we can do that to get a nice simplification. And then we'll do the same thing here as well. Okay, so that's gonna leave me with the following way to rewrite this. I'll have the integral from zero to one, and then I'll have one over root two times x plus one, quantity squared plus one dx. That's for the first one. That's because when this two enters this thing that's squared, it must have its square root taken. That's like an entry fee. And then likewise for this second one, we'll have the integral from zero to one of one over root two x minus one quantity squared and then plus one dx. Okay, so I think that's looking pretty good. Maybe I'll do one more thing before we move on to the next chalkboard. And that is I'll make a u substitution for each of these. 
and it'll be a very similar u substitution. I'll set u equal to root 2x plus or minus 1, depending on which, which integral we're in. So here it'll be root 2x plus 1, here it'll be root 2x minus 1. But in both cases, we'll have dx is equal to 1 over root 2 du. So that's how that'll work out. Okay, so let's see what that leaves us with. We'll have a 1 over root 2 out front, and then we'll have the integral of 1 over u squared plus 1 du when all is said and done. Now let's look at the bounds of integration. When x is equal to 0, here u will be equal to 1 because it's 0 plus 1. And when x is equal to 1, here u will be equal to the square root of 2 plus 1 because that's in the plus situation. And then likewise, for this second one, we'll have something very similar. We'll have 1 over root 2 and then the integral from negative 1 up to root 2 minus 1 of the same functions, 1 over u squared plus 1 du. Okay, so something that looks like that. Okay, so now let's bring that information up and then we'll finish this thing off. So this is where we've ended our calculation. Now we're ready to just use the fundamental theorem of calculus. So we'll take the antiderivative and plug in the endpoints. Notice we've got a factor of 1 over the square root of 2 out front. And then for this integral, we'll have the arctan of the square root of 2 plus 1 minus the arctan of 1. And then for the second one, we'll have the arctan of the square root of 2 minus 1 and then minus the arctan of negative 1. Okay. But now the arctan of 1 is well known to be pi over 4, whereas the arctan of negative 1 is known to be negative pi over 4. So let's notice this pi over 4 is connected to a minus sign. That negative pi over 4 is also connected to a minus sign. So when it's all is said and done, these two will cancel each other. And that'll leave us the sum of these two arctans. But that being said, I'm going to write this in a tricky way using a limit so we can use a well-known like arctan identity. So I'm going to write this as 1 over root 2 and then I'll take the limit as t goes to, let's see, root 2 minus 1 from below of the arctan of root 2 plus 1 plus the arctan of t. Great. And now let's notice in this setup we have root 2 plus 1 times t is less than 1. That's because here we're taking this limit as t goes from below. But now since that product is less than 1 in our current situation, we can use the sum identity for the inverse tangent function, which should be on the screen right now. And that allows us to rewrite this as 1 over root 2, and then we'll have the limit as t goes to root 2 minus 1 from below of the arctan of, like we saw on the screen, the sum of these two, so that's the root 2 plus 1 plus t, and then 1 minus the product of these two. So that'll be root 2 plus 1 times t. Okay, so now let's just look at what's happening inside of this limit. So as t goes to root 2 minus 1 from below, this is going to approach 2 times the square root of 2. Then this denominator is approaching 0, but it's important to consider which direction it's approaching 0 from. And this is actually now approaching 0 from above. So I'll put this as in quotes positive 0. Okay. So that means that what we really have going on here is 1 over root 2 and then the limit as, I'm going to change my input here to maybe y goes to positive infinity of the arctan of y. 
That's because under this limiting situation, we have this interior stuff is approaching positive infinity. And I guess I should have said this a little bit before, but why is it the correct choice to take this limit from below? Well, that's because up here it's a lower bound of integration. Okay, so anyway, now it's well known that the limit as y goes to positive infinity of arctan of y is pi over two. So this being pi over two, multiplying into one over root two, gives us pi over two root two, which was our final goal. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you wanna get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.